If you have the attention span of a moth, go watch a TikTok video instead. But if you're serious about getting your first wholesale deal in 30 days or less, this video is for you. I'm gonna give you a comprehensive breakdown to not only the fastest way to your first wholesale deal, but how to do it for free with zero marketing budget. If you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton. With 20 years experience, I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. And here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Getting to your first deal as fast as humanly possible is a big deal for new wholesalers. Seeing success quickly motivates you to keep going and most importantly, helps you catch the vision that wholesaling can be a six and even seven figure business. And while there's more than one way to get your first wholesale deal, what I'm gonna show you to do just works. And the reason why it works is because it has the least amount of steps and the least amount of moving parts. The leads are readily available and easy to find. And if you follow the steps I outline, you'll have a competitive advantage. And what's cool is you can continue doing this strategy and do multiple deals a month. Bottom line, if you follow the strategies I'm gonna outline right now, I believe you can get your first deal in 30 days or less. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. First and foremost, for now, I want you to only target on-market properties. On-market means that the property is listed for sale with a real estate agent. For now, I want you to hyper-focus and only go after listed properties for sale. Now, I've been wholesaling on-market and teaching how to do so for 20 years. No one has more experience, no one is better at it, and no one knows how to teach it as good as me. And once you learn how, on-market wholesaling is one of the most effective methods to get good wholesale deals. And yes, it's true that there's some challenges with on-market. On-market properties are competitive because they're public on Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor.com. So more people know about them. And in some cases, you're competing with homeowners. Another challenge is agents require an earnest money deposit with an accepted offer. Earnest money is a good faith deposit held in escrow by the title company and gets reimbursed to you at closing when you wholesale, but it can be as little as $500 and as high as 10% of the offer price. Another challenge is agents typically require proof of funds in the amount of your offer price. These are challenges that don't typically exist with non-listed off-market properties, but once you learn how to overcome these obstacles, which I'll show you how, on-market is a goldmine for wholesale deals. But here's what's also true about on-market properties. Many distressed, motivated sellers list their properties for sale on market with an agent, and there are always more and new leads that come available every single day. What's also true is these properties can be acquired at wholesale prices. And what's also true is you don't have to spend a dime in marketing to find these deals. And what's also true is you, the buyer, don't pay a dime in commissions. The seller pays the commissions. And what's also true is agents can be a source of continual ongoing leads. Now I've done hundreds of on-market properties and dozens of repeat deals with the same agents who continually feed me deals. With my students and partners, we do millions of dollars a year in on-market deals. Bottom line is this, learn the agent game and you will never go hungry again. The first step to get your first wholesale deal is to create property searches in your target market where you're looking for deals so that you can start finding distressed properties for sale. Once you have searches set up, you'll get instant notification when properties come available for sale. These are properties that you're going to go after. I recently did a video where I show my top four favorite free tools to set up these automated searches. On that video, I show step-by-step -step tutorials on how to use each free tool and how to set up the searches. I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description box below for you. Once you have your searches set up, you'll start getting notifications for distressed properties for sale. And that takes us to step two, which is to analyze each property you find to determine your wholesale offer price. Now you can't get a deal unless you make an offer and you can't make an offer if you don't know the right price to offer. In other words, you have to be able to quickly determine what price you need to offer so you can wholesale it for a profit. That means you need to understand cash buyers and what they are willing to pay for properties so that you can bring them good deals that they'll want to buy. Now the thing is in wholesale real estate, it's not one size fits all. Not all cash buyers are the same. What they are willing to pay depends on their buy criteria and their intended use of the property. For example, a buy and hold investor who's gonna keep the property to rent for cash flow will typically pay more than a flipper who is gonna spend a lot more on renovations. 
The point is, the better you understand your different exit strategy options, the better you'll be at analyzing deals to determine the best offer price for each deal that you look at. I recently did a video that breaks down in detail the different exit strategy formulas and how to calculate the offer price on each deal you look at. I'll put the link to that video in the description below for you. But the process has to be fast. If you overanalyze, it will take too long, you'll miss out on deals, and you won't get your first deal very fast. Analyzing deals is a skill you have to become proficient at. Once you've determined your ideal wholesale buy price, it's time for step three, which is to actually make an offer. Now this is extremely important. If you do this step wrong, the whole strategy will fail miserably. Up until this point, all I've asked you to do is go after on-market leads, create searches so you can find distressed properties, and analyze the leads to get to your wholesale offer price. But now, this is where things get real and you have to understand how real estate agency works to really grasp this step. Let me explain. When a seller decides to go on market and hire a real estate agent, they are agreeing to pay a real estate commission. Now let's say that it's the standard 6%. Typically the listing agent representing the seller will get 3% for doing the listing and representing the seller. A buyer's agent who represents a buyer gets the other 3%. So the listing agent gets 3% for representing the seller and the buyer's agent gets 3% for representing the buyer for a total of 6%. But even though the buyer's agent represents the buyer, the seller is the one who pays the buyer agent's 3% commission. Now, as of this recording, commission reform is underway and in the near future, the way agents get compensated, especially buyer's agents, may change. But for now, usually there are two different agents and the seller pays a total of 6%. But what if the listing agent also has a buyer and their state or broker allows the agent to represent both parties? Then that agent would get 6%, 3% for the listing side and 3% for the buyer side. And as far as total commissions paid, there is no difference to the seller. Why? Because the seller is paying the 6% regardless of how the commissions are split. When the same agent represents the seller and the buyer, this is technically called dual agency. To avoid a conflict of interest, some brokers decide not to let their agents participate in dual agency, and in some states, it's illegal. I think currently, as of this recording, there are like eight states that do not allow dual agency. However, there are several workaround strategies. Most of these states do allow what's called designated agency. This is where there are two agents in the same brokerage where one represents the seller and the other represents the buyer or an agent could become what's called a transactional broker where they don't represent either party in the transaction. You'll see why this is significant in a minute, so keep watching. Now that you understand agency, where permissible at the time of making the offer, you are gonna strategically create a dual agency situation. 20 years ago when I started doing this technique, I coined it the double dip technique and still use it today. Here's how it works. Rather than working with a buyer's agent with each lead you find, instead go directly to the listing agent representing the seller. Sometimes it's not very easy to find the listing agent. The fastest way is to look up the address on propwire.com. It tells you right there who the listing agent is with their contact info. If you've never heard of Propwire, it's the nation's largest database of distressed seller leads, including on-market properties, and it's absolutely free to search and download as many leads as you want. To check it out, just go to joinpropwire.com. Once you have the listing agent's number, call the agent and tell him or her that you are an investor and you wanna make an offer on their listing and that you are unrepresented, meaning you're not working with a buyer's agent, and tell them that you will let them represent you as the buyer's agent on their specific listing, as well as any future listings that they get. You know, I would let you write the offer for me and represent me on the buyer side that way you're getting both sides of the commission. Are you able to do that? Love to work with you on anything else that comes your way. If you get something else like this and you wanna have me take a look at it before you even go on market. And to really help you get comfortable with this conversation and even know how to overcome any objections when using the double dip technique, I created word for word scripts. To download those for free, just go to agentofferscripts.com. And this still works in non-dual agency states like Florida and Texas. The agent may choose to do designated agency or become a transactional broker. Just offer the double dip and let the agent work it out on their end. The point is you are creating a competitive advantage by working directly with the listing agent. 
By using this technique, listing agents will be motivated to work with you and they will tell you about other listings they have and they will call you about their deals in the future. Let me illustrate an example of the power of the double dip technique with a recent deal. This is an on-market property we just wholesaled for $22,000 in High Point, North Carolina. We had a pre-existing relationship with the agent. That agent called us with this deal. We let the agent double dip, so they were super motivated to bring us the deal. Okay, step four is to make a lot of offers regardless of asking price. I have a rule I live by with on-market. Never discriminate offers based on asking price. Always make the offer, no matter how outlandish it may seem. There are two reasons why you should always make the offer. Reason number one, you never know when a seller will take your low offer. Recently, I did a live call where I made an offer for $55,000 on a listing at $110,000, and it was accepted. That's half of list price. You can watch that call and see exactly how I did it. I'll put the link in the description below so you can watch it later. The second reason to always make the offer, no matter asking price, is because it's more important to establish a double dip relationship than it is to get the deal you're calling about. With every on-market offer, always say to the agent, in the future, when you get a distressed property listing, will you call me about it? I'll let you represent me and I'll get you a cash offer right away. Recently, one of my new acquisitions managers called and made a ridiculously low offer on a property, which was immediately rejected. But then after establishing the double dip relationship while talking on the phone, he asked the agent if he had any other distressed properties that we could take a look at and make offers on. And the agent gave him five other properties to look at and two of them weren't even listed yet. Never forget, it's not about the property, it's always about the relationship because those agents will bring you repeat deals for years to come. Now, if you really wanna get your first deal fast, like in the next 30 days, here's what you need to do. Make it a goal to make at least five double dip offers a day, five days a week for four weeks. That will be a hundred offers. If you're willing to make a hundred offers, my promise to you is you will get a deal. Let me share with you seven really valuable tips to get your first on-market deal in the next 30 days. Tip number one, use my agent offer sheet, which covers everything you need to make sure the agent includes in your offer. Remember, the agent is gonna write the offer using their state approved contract, but you need to make sure they include everything you need to be able to wholesale that contract. And I did a video where I break down 10 critical things to make sure are included in your offer, including a 10 day inspection contingency, so you have time to verify and validate that you have a good deal. Make sure you watch that video, link in the description. Tip number two will help you navigate earnest money and proof of funds, which are going to be required. In most markets, plan on $500 to $1,000 to put down as earnest money. If you don't have that to float until closing, put in your offer that the earnest money is due after your 10-day inspection, and then get your cash buyer to put down the required earnest money for you. Now, as far as proof of funds, if you're a pro or prime level subscriber to Flipster, you get unlimited custom proof of funds letters for as many offers as you want. If you've never heard of Flipster, it's an all-inclusive deal management software with everything you need to wholesale and flip houses. To test drive it for free, just go to joinflipster.com. Tip number three, a verbal offer is still an offer. In fact, if your offer is really low, the agent isn't gonna wanna spend the time to put it in writing. When that happens, ask them to call the seller and give a verbal cash offer. Again, my agent scripts show you how to handle that. Agentofferscripts.com to download that for free. Tip number four, speed to the deal is the secret ingredient. If the property is priced well, you have to get your double dip offer in within minutes of a new listing coming available. Let me tell you two different stories to illustrate how important this is. First story, a brand new listing came out on a distressed property. We made a low verbal offer and the agent replied that the seller verbally accepted our offer but then the agent drug her feet, dragged her feet on getting us the paperwork. And within a few hours, they received a full price offer from a buyer's agent that they decided to take. So we lost the deal. That was the agent's fault for dragging her feet. Story two, a brand new listing came out. We immediately made a double dip offer and the agent had the written offer to us within minutes to sign digitally. She said, please hurry, I'm getting a lot of calls. Within an hour of this property coming out for sale, we had a fully executed contract signed by the seller and we got the deal. The point is, in some cases, if you're not lightning fast, you'll miss out on good deals. Tip number five, 
Learn how to structure and wholesale creative financing deals. Wholesaling creative is one of the hottest strategies right now, but you have to be able to explain creative to agents effectively so that they can pitch it to their clients. Right now, I'm covering a lot of content here on my channel on wholesaling creative. I'll put a playlist link in the description below dedicated entirely to wholesaling creative. Tip number six is to make sure the contract doesn't have a no assignment clause. If it's a bank property, such as an REO, it most definitely will have a no assignment clause. But don't worry, I developed a workaround using an LLC. I did a video where I break it down, link in the description. Tip number seven is to make sure you explain properly to the agent what you are doing. There is a right way and a wrong way to talk to agents about wholesaling. Most agents don't understand wholesalers or have had a bad experience in the past with a wholesaler and will shut you down without giving you a chance. And I did a video that breaks down exactly how to explain to agents what you're doing and why they can trust you. Be sure to watch that video. You know the drill. I'll put the link in the description. Finally, when it comes to assigning an on-market contract, once the agent helps you get a fully executed contract with the seller, their role is done. What you do with that contract is your business. The double dip listing agent isn't involved in the process of finding a cash buyer or assigning the contract. You have to handle that. Take your contract and assign it to a cash buyer, same as you would with an off-market property. So how well does on-market wholesaling work? Like I said, I personally do millions a year wholesaling on market and so do my partners and students. So if you want to not just do your first deal, but learn how to take this technique and turn it into a full blown business, be sure to check out my mentor program. Just go to fasttrackwithjerry.com to learn more. Next, I want you to see this process in action. I recently released a video where I show how I did all of these steps and secured a deal in less than 20 minutes. You even get to hear me on the phone doing the double dip technique with the agent. This will really help you see the vision of how this works. Watch that video now, and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.